Good morning and welcome back to our fourth Anger to the Word morning reflection. Hope you're having a good Thursday morning. And uh, the text that we've been working through this week is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're looking at verses 12 through 22. And uh, we've been breaking this down bit by bit, piece by piece. And this morning our focus is going to be on the importance of being in Christ and how history's greatest moment is significant and matters most because it is what enables us to stand righteous before God in Christ. And so let's all take our Bibles and turn together to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to go ahead and read it together. Here's what the scripture says. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, even so by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, we have focused on the fact that this, uh, the resurrection is an historic event. It is also a theological fact. And this morning, we're going to focus on the fact that it is an experiential fact. The way that I'm putting it is, in Christ, all the dead are made alive. God didn't just send his son to die on the cross and to rise from the dead so that we could know about it. He did want us to know about it, but he didn't want us to stop at just a basic knowledge of this. Oh, I believe that it happened. No, he wants it to actually affect our lives in a very personal way. He wants us to be saved by this resurrection. He wants us to actually personally trust in this resurrection. He wants us our, our lives to be personally transformed by the power of the resurrection. And we're going to see this in the little statement that is made here in verse 22. He says, In Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, when he says in in Adam all die, he's referring back to what took place in the Garden of Eden when Adam ate that fruit. Romans chapter 5 says, By one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Romans 3.23 says that the wages of sin is death. Romans 3, it says that there is none righteous, no, not one. The reason that there is none righteous, the reason that all are dead in Adam, is because he represented us. We are his offspring. We are his descendants. And so when a person is born into this world, they're born with a sin problem. First of all, they're born spiritually dead. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, you have he quickened. That word quickened means to be made alive, who were dead in trespasses and in sins. He says that we walked according to the prince of this world, and we were by nature children of wrath. We were born with a sin problem. And secondly, that sin problem means that we're spiritually dead. That The word spiritually dead has the idea that we are separated from God and we have no relationship with him as father to son or as son or daughter to God the Father. Our, our, our lives are separated from him. He's still our creator. He still loves us. He still cares about us. We still are image bearers. We still have value to God, but spiritually we're dead. We are incapable of earning God's favor through anything that we do for God or that we give to God. And so that means that we are powerless to overcome this sin problem through anything that we do for God. I'm reminded of what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3. He says, the things that were gained to me, these I counted loss for the excellency of Christ, that I may be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is through the law, but the righteousness of God, which is by faith. 
He says that the things that he once counted as gain, he viewed them as dumb. Isaiah 64, 6, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And so when the Bible says in verse 22, in Adam all die, it means we are broken, we are sinful, we are separated from God, and we have absolutely no ability to make ourselves clean and righteous and holy and acceptable to God. He's got to do something for us or we're going to be left in our sins. And so that moves us to a second reality that's that's stated in this verse. It says, in Christ, all shall be made alive. So a person is by nature born in Adam, but they can be born into Christ and made alive. Taking us back to that Ephesians 2 passage, he says, you hath he quickened. At the end of that little section, it says, it is by grace that we are saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so when a person is born again, they are actually, they are actually experiencing what Jesus was talking about in John chapter 3. When he told Nicodemus, he said, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. This is what he says. Or also in John chapter 1, a couple of chapters before, he says, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to be called the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And so a person has to be born again, and then they are in Christ and made alive by the regenerating work of the Spirit of God. Another passage that really emphasizes this is Romans 5, 6 to 10. When we could not save ourselves, God made a way by the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ that we could be made alive. Listen carefully to what it says. It says, when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. God commendeth his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And I love this next little statement. For if when we were the enemies of God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And so the difference between being in Adam and being in Christ is the new birth. We have to be born again. And so I want to conclude with a couple of very simple and practical thoughts on this little statement. The first is this. We are all born in one position. No exceptions. We're all born in Adam. That is the default position. That is where we are by nature. And you say, well, I wasn't born dead. No, you were born physically alive, but you were born spiritually dead. And that's all of us. No exceptions. Secondly, there are only two options. Either I'm in Adam or I'm in Christ. There's not a middle ground. There's not some in-between stage. It's a very simple matter, one or the other. Either I'm in Adam or I'm in Christ. Either I'm spiritually dead in Adam or I'm spiritually alive in Christ. And so that leads me to a, a final, just simple question. Where do you stand today? Are you in Adam or are you in Christ? You might say, well, how do I know? Well, if you understand the gospel and you have turned to God and placed your simple childlike faith in the finished work of Christ, calling on the Lord to save you from your sins, depending on his death and resurrection and righteousness, you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. You have passed from death to life. You have been quickened who were born dead in trespasses and sins. And so if today you are not at this very moment in Christ, I want to encourage you, call you, and, and challenge you, plead with you to turn to Christ, to trust in what he's done for you so that you can stand righteous before him alive in Christ. Have a blessed morning, and Lord willing, tomorrow we will conclude with some final thoughts. Bye now.